In this video tutorial, I am going to discuss about protein misfolding and its related disorder. We know that protein folding is a complex process and as an end result of this protein folding mechanism, we get particular protein in its native conformation. But sometime due to some unknown reason, such native conformation of the protein is lost and it is converted into the misfolded protein. Right? Now, the conversion from native to this misfolded variety, it can be any, it may be sometimes spontaneous, it may be after abnormal protein cleavage or it may be due to mutation in particular gene. Now, the biggest difference between native conformation of the protein and misfolded protein is that native conformation is biologically active and soluble protein, whereas misfolded protein, it is biologically inactive and insoluble protein. Now, why native conformation is the soluble? The reason is that in the native conformation of the protein, the hydrophobic groups are buried deep inside the native conformation. So, on the surface, there are only hydrophilic molecules which can better interact with the watery surrounding environment. And that is why native conformation is soluble. Whereas, in case of misfolded protein, what happens? The hydrophobic residues are on the surface of this misfolded protein. And these hydrophobic residues cannot interact with the watery surround, right? So, that is why they are insoluble. Now, the misfolded proteins are the bad quality proteins. And our body has an efficient system to tackle such misfolded protein. The one system or the one way is that this misfolded protein, it is converted back to this native conformation of the protein, right? And this process from misfolded to native conformation, it is known as renaturation. And this renaturation is brought about by chaperons. The second way to tackle such misfolded protein is that, that if renaturation is not possible, then such misfolded proteins are tagged by ubiquitins and proteolytically degraded. This ubiquitins and its associated proteolytical degradation system, it is the separate topic which I will cover in the future video. So, these two system, this renaturation and tagging and degradation, this both can be called as a quality control mechanism. Now, why? Because by this mechanism, this bad quality protein is taken care by, okay? It is our body is able to get rid of such misfolded protein. So, this is a quality control mechanism. But the biggest problem is that this quality control mechanism, it is not perfect. See, so what happens? such misfolded protein, they tend to aggregate. Now, why misfolded protein tends to aggregate? The reason as I already told you that on, on the surface of misfolded protein, there are hydrophobic residues and these hydrophobic residues, it interact with other hydrophobic residues of such misfolded protein. So, they tend to aggregate and once they tend, uh, once they aggregate, what will happen? Deposition of aggregates of misfolded protein occurs. Now, this deposition, it may be intracellular, it may be extracellular or it may be both. So, such deposition, it lead to number of diseases. There are till now more than 30 different diseases are attributed to the protein misfolding. But in this video, I will discuss about the two most prominent and interesting diseases. The first one is Alzheimer disease and second one is the prions disease. So, let us first cover Alzheimer disease. Now, the Alzheimer disease is the neurodegenerative disorder. And in this case, the protein of interest is the amyloid precursor protein. This particular protein, it is present on the cell membrane of brain cells or you can say neurons. So, now to better understand this amyloid precursor protein, first I will draw the cell membrane of brain cell. So, suppose this is the cell membrane of brain cell. Now, this amyloid precursor protein, it is present on this cell membrane. It is actually a transmembrane protein. Okay. So, suppose this one is the amyloid precursor protein. As you can see, the C terminal is inside and N terminal is the outside of the cell. And some part of the this protein is passing through the cell membrane. Now, on this protein, this particular location is the interesting one. It is called as A beta segment, which is shown in the red. 
Okay. This A beta segment, it is 42 amino acid long. You can see that this A beta segment, some part of the A beta segment is extracellular, whereas some part of the A beta segment is inside the cell membrane. Okay. Now, on this amyloid precursor protein, there are three different sites for the endopeptidase and endopeptidase is in this case is the secretase. This is the site for the beta secretase, this is the site for the alpha secretase and this is the site for the gamma secretase. Remember beta secretase and gamma secretase, these are the physiological enzyme, whereas alpha secretase is the abnormal enzyme. So now what happens? Normally, beta secretase acts first and then gamma secretase. So when beta secretase and gamma secretase both acts, then this amyloid precursor protein is divided into three pieces. One is the fragment of this N-terminal segment, second is the segment which contains A beta segment and the third part is this complete C-terminal segment. Now in this case when beta and gamma secretase acts, all these three segment they are soluble and it can be easily cleared in our system. But the problem occurs when the alpha secretase acts along with the gamma secretase. So you can see if alpha secretase acts and then gamma secretase acts, what will happen? Again here also amyloid precursor protein, it is broken down to the, into three fragments. One is the complete and terminal fragment, second one is the pure A beta segment and third one is the complete C terminal segment. Now this A beta segment in its pure form, it is very dangerous. You can see in this earlier case. Here also there is A beta segment, but some piece of N terminal fragment is still there. So at that time it is not dangerous, but when A beta segment is, it, is in its pure form, at that time A beta segment is dangerous. Now why A beta segment is dangerous? Because A beta monomers spontaneously aggregates to form insoluble fibrils of beta pleated sheet, which are also known as amyloids. So you can see, you can see that like these, this A beta monomers aggregates and it forms a insoluble fibrils of beta pleated sheet and which is also called as A beta amyloid. So now this amyloid itself they are neurotoxic and so we can understand why Alzheimer disease is the neurodegenerative disorder, right. The second effect of this amyloid is that this amyloid they deposit in the brain parenchyma and around blood vessels. So if brain is examined microscopically, we can see the plaques of such A beta amyloid. These plaques are nothing but the deposits of aggregated A beta peptides in nerve tissue parenchyma. Now the third effect of this amyloid, this A beta amyloid is that this A beta amyloid they activates kinase and when kinase is activated, it brings about phosphorylation, but this particular kinase is causes the phosphorylation of tau protein. This tau is the protein, okay. Now the normal function of the tau is that they bring about microtubules assembly, which is essential for the cell functioning. But when the tau protein is phosphorylated, it results into microtubule disassembly, which is neurotoxic. So again, this can also lead to neurodegenerative changes. The second effect of this phosphorylated tau is that it leads to aggregation of tau. So tau aggregates. Once tau protein aggregates, it results into neurofibrillary tangles. This neurofibrillary tangles, it develops intracellularly, but once cell death occurs, then these neurofibrillary tangles, they persist extracellular, extracellularly. So these plaques and tangles, these are the hallmark features of the Alzheimer disease. So now let's discuss about prion's disease. First understand the meaning of prion from where this prion word is derived. Prion is derived from the proteinous infectious agent. From this PRO and from this in, this prion word is derived. Now the second word to understand is the prion protein. The short form is the PRP. Now on the surface of neurons and glial cell, there is a prion protein. So that means this prion protein is the normal. It is found in all of us. It is physiological protein. So when it is normal, we call it as a PRPC. This C is in the superscript. 
and this C it stands for cellular. Now this physiological form of prion protein it is rich in alpha helix but sometime by some unknown mechanism this physiological variety of prion protein it is converted to the pathological variety. It's all alpha helix are replaced by the beta pleated sheet it is like this and this variety it is resistant to proteolytic degradation. This pathological variety it is also called as prion protein but here instead of superscript C we write superscript SC. Here SC it stands for the scrappy. Now why scrappy? Scrappy is the name of disease in the sheep where this pathological variety of prion protein is found. Now you may ask that what is the difference between this physiological variety of prion protein and pathological variety of prion protein. Remember amino acid sequence is same in both physiological and pathological. Second all the post translational modifications are also same in this PRPC and PRPSC. Only their protein folding is different that is the different that is all rest everything is same. Now, this PRPSC it acts as a template for converting the normal protein to the pathological conformation. See one PRPSC when it comes into the contact with other normal physiological PRPC then this physiological PRPC it immediately converts to this pathological variety. So this is how the chain reaction start this acts as a template for misfolding this normal physiological protein right. So, it, it is so fast that ultimately this disease it is invariably fatal and it is and it develops very fast. Now we can consider this prion protein as an infectious protein also. Now why? Suppose this misfolded variety this pathological variety of prion protein if it is somehow transferred to another person then that person can also develop prion disease right. So, these proteins are considered infectious because of its this nature. So, what are the roots of transmission of this prions disease? They can be transmitted by blood transfusion, by corneal transplantation or by deep brain electrodes. Remember deep brain electrodes are the electrodes used in some neurological procedures. Now, what are the different prions disease? See prion disease they are also known as transmissible spongiform encephalopathies short form is TSE. Why transmissible? Because it can be transmitted from one person to another person. Why spongiform? Because the post mortem appearance of the brain is the sponge like and why encephalopathy? Because it is the neuronal disease. Now it can occur in human, in sheep or in cattle. In the human three forms of prion disease is seen. One is the Creutzfeldt Jacob disease, second one is the fatal familial insomnia and third one is the Kuru. In the sheep as I had already told you it is a scrappy and this SC it is used in the subscript to denote a pathological variety of prion protein. And in the cattle it is known as spongiform encephalopathy where it is also known as maid cow disease. So that is all about the protein misfolding and related disorders. If you have any query or confusion, please write it down in the comment section below. Thank you.